Hey there, Wargamers. Austin with Death Ray Designs back again for more basing stuff. We got more bases, we got more cool stuff, and this time it's going to be Odin's Armory. These have a very uh, significant Celtic theme to them, so they'd be great for stuff like Space Wolves or just about any kind of sci-fi army that has a little bit of a Celtic or a um, religious sort of feel. So let's take a look at these. Um, these are more of our two layer bases. So like this piece here would sit on top of that um, so that you'd have this little piece exposed with the, uh, the knot work and then this piece goes on top of that and so on and so forth. Um, I think that we're going to try to stick to some generally space wolfy kind of colors here during our test scheme. And I think that'll, that'll work out pretty well for us. So I've got a handful of different grays, some blacks, some yellows and browns, and I think that that'll work um, for, for the color scheme that we're going for. I'll probably be digging back in the, the wallow paint here at some point, but I think those are gonna be a solid starting point for us. So let's dig in with uh, our first base coat. And I think that we're probably gonna do at least a general base coat over everything with the same stuff, which is gonna be um, Rock by Minotaur, which is kind of a, a blue gray. It's a good middle of the road and we'll do some uh, highlighting from there and some shading from there and uh, we'll just see where it goes. Here, we'll Start in with our thin coat over everything. Uh, let's do a second layer of rock here. I think that this is a good starting point, but um, it's not quite to the, the opacity that I want yet. So we can always come back in and shade it back down with some of our, uh, our ghost tints or other candy colors. But I wanna have a really solid initial coat here. Okay, looking to see if there's any spots. I'm not as worried about these areas in here because those are gonna be covered up by the upper portions um, and because those don't actually have any punch throughs that are gonna be looking at that particular piece. We don't have to worry about them too much. So I've just realized that we're probably not gonna be doing the exact same thing to both halves of this. So I've gone ahead and uh, broken this in half. I just ran through this all real quick. And we're gonna start working on just the upper portions for right now. Um, for this, we're gonna be doing a little bit of um, just general highlighting for the moment on each of the individual tiles. And I think that we should probably do something to differentiate the little ones that have the, the little vent gratings in them. Um, and if you notice up here, we also still have a couple of spots where we've got a little bit of knot work. So we need to remember, figure out what exactly we're doing for our lower portion as well and implement that on the upper parts too uh, so that they, they match. So I've loaded up with base gray here and it's uh, significantly brighter than rock. So. Um, we're just gonna hit the center of each of these little squares um, to try to brighten them up a little bit. And then we're probably gonna start doing a little bit of masking. And like I said, the, the vents, I think we're gonna do something different on those. So uh, I'm not gonna even bother with them right now. We'll come back around to them and do something. I think that when we do our knot work, which is going to be more of a non-metallic gold color, that maybe we'll also do those panels in that too, just to kind of help balance it out a little bit so that we've got a little element on the upper level that's gonna match the knot work on the lower level. And for my next magic trick, we're gonna use some frisket film. Um, this is an excellent way to mask off fiddly little details, especially on laser cut acrylic, because with laser cut acrylic, you uh, end up leaving a little divot around all the details, which means that it's really, really easy to take a hobby knife and just follow those little troughs all around um, and you cut away any of the, the masking material that's there. Shoop. Okay, there we go. Just barely got enough to cover the whole thing. We just need to start tracing lines. And I think that our first thing that we're gonna do is um, remove all of the masking that is in between the squares. So all these like little, little bitty strips around here, the one that's closest to each of the squares. So we've got the square, the, the little piping right around it, and then that. Um, I think that we're gonna leave the little bit that's right around the square and we'll come in and do a second pass removing that and doing a little something over top. So for now, we're just gonna start by tracing around all of the outer squares. So as you can see here, um, we've got 
our frisket film removed on everywhere except for the tiles on this section. Um, and we're going to paint some of the lines in between a much darker gray. I am using gravel from uh, Montana, but any like charcoal gray will do in this situation. So let's get in here. Lay down a coat of that. Because this gray doesn't have really any blue in it, um, it'll contrast with the, the blue gray of the rock a little bit nicer and we can darken it down just a touch. And now we're gonna switch over to some FW Black. It is super duper opaque, so we'll only really need like a drop for what we're about to do. So in this, the areas where um, it's the furthest from the intersections, I'm going to shade just a little bit so that it's closer or it's, it's brighter as it gets closer to the corners. So right in here, shade that down, shade that down. So hopefully you guys can see kind of what I'm doing here. Um, I'm coming across and then across this way. And it's basically making the middles of those bars a little bit darker. We've got our, our shadowing done now, and um, it's time to move on to the next part of the frisket film, which is going to be um, the, the boxes around those tiles. So um, as much as it pains me to do this, we gotta peel this frisket film off and put down a new coat of frisket film because we can't see through it now. This also kind of gives us an idea of how we're looking now. So we've got our second piece of frisket and drop that down in place and now we can see them again yay but time to get back to cutting so we got one done and you can see we've got the the outlines around the squares exposed this time so we'll be able to hit both of those and the grout in between them so i'm gonna get the rest of these done and we'll be back in a sec so now that we've got that next part of the masking cut we're going to go over to a transparent black that i've prepared um I keep making this stuff and keep using it. It's great. It's a uh, part FW ink, which is a super opaque black ink along with a whole bunch of matte varnish. Um, just a few drops to a whole mess of the stuff. It defeats me every time, Justin. <laughs> God, I think I did pull something in my hand. <laughs> all right, so we've got it loaded up now. We're not trying to just blast black all over this thing at this point. We're trying to just tint all the stuff that's exposed so that um, it it all gets a little darker um, because the, the area right next to the tiles right now are the same color as the tiles. So we just wanna make that a little darker and the spaces in between a little darker so you kinda get a three stage effect. Um, and uh, let's just see how it goes. We're diving into it. And as you can see, it's not completely obscuring any of the, uh, the details that we've painted here. And we definitely want it to continue to have some definition between that first stage that we did and this one. So let's pull these off and see what we got. Okay, all right, all right, all right. One of the key things that we were talking about when we were planning this color scheme um, was that um, if you were doing this for a uh, Space Wolves army, you wouldn't want the, the uh, base to be exactly the same color as the armor. So I'm trying to, to make sure that we get enough variations of things in here so that if this, you know, this color were to be really close to um, the armor on a Space Wolf or some other uh, miniature that it's not gonna matter because it'll just have similar colors and not identical colors. Then again, I'm not painting any Space Wolves right now, so it's not exactly 100% pertinent to my interests, but just for you guys out there who might be using this on any particular models, adding a lot of shading and highlighting is gonna help mitigate that kind of risk. Okay. I think it's starting to look pretty good, and we've got our three tones in here. They're a little more subtle than I'd like, but we could fix that with a little bit of edge highlighting. 
Um, and I think that now it's time to start working on some of the other areas that we're going to do. Um, I think that the, like I said, the vents and everything are probably going to be the same color as the knot work, which I think is going to be kind of a non-metallic gold color. Um, so I think let's, uh, let's get moving on that. We're going to have to mask off, uh, the areas that we want to do non-metallic metal up here. So it's going to be this section, that, 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 and that. And then for these, we can be a little bit more messy because there's nothing under here that's really gonna need to be masked off. So this should be much, much faster. All we gotta do is cut out the areas that are gonna have that non-metallic gold, which should be pretty straightforward. And then we got this guy here. Here we are. All right, so that's basically what we're doing and uh, I'll be back when all the rest of the frisket is cut. So we've got a little bit of uh, Citadel XV88 loaded up. It's uh, thinned down, but um, I'm just gonna put a quick base coat down of this. So we're gonna switch over to uh, Pale Saffron. This is one of the HD colors from uh, Reaper. And I'm gonna add a little bit of matte varnish to our mix here. Um, and part of that is just to thin it out. And I also am hoping that that will help encourage it to be a more even transition with the airbrush as opposed to being more speckly. So it's, when you get into like really brighter or lighter colors, it tends to give you a whole lot of sort of spotting and speckling um, so hopefully this will help some. What I'm thinking is that we could probably do that non-metallic uh, metal effect where you kind of have diagonal lines and I think that might look nice and then as long as we keep that relatively subdued we can do some wet blending on top of it on the knot work uh, so that this whole back area is, it's got kind of a non-metallic sheen to it um, but it's not so overpowering that the details that are supposed to be engraved in it won't show up. So we're going to try to do diagonals this way. Actually, let's just turn our whole operation that way. That'll be easier for me to keep track of. I have grabbed some high key yellow from scale 75, some driver tartar and a little bit of matte varnish. I'm trying to make a glaze out of this very pale yellow color here. And we can test it out right here, to see how that looks. Um, it's a little tough to see under the thing here. So yeah, okay. That's actually pretty okay. Like. Uh, the, the thing that I'm trying to do here is on the knot work, um, I want to come in here and glaze these areas just so they're a little bit brighter and they stand out from the background a little bit more. Um, and then I may go in with a little bit of an edge highlight and touch up a couple of places just to make them look a little bit uh, brighter and shinier and more eye-catching. So let's, uh, let's work on this one here. And I'm going to come in here. Try to do this as cleanly as possible. Try not to leave any big streaks or anything. And do this in as few passes as possible. You don't want to put this on terribly thick either because you want it to be very, very transparent so that um, the, the shading and things that are happening behind it uh, are still very visible. It's looking very nice now. As soon as that dries up, we definitely have it standing out from the background a little bit more. So now, on to the big leagues. On this one specifically, because we've got such large areas of this, 
Um, one of the things that I want to try to do is wherever we have an intersection like this, like let's say this is coming over the top um, of this piece here. When I put paint down here, I want to pull towards the middle away from where it's being overlapped so that it's a little bit brighter away from the place where a piece might be casting a shadow on top of it. So we'll see how that works um, and uh, what kind of effects we get. Okay, I'm gonna flip this around here. And come at it from the other direction now. Okay, so that's still probably a little bit more than what we wanna leave in the middle there. So I'm gonna dab a little bit off and then come back in. So when that dries, it'll likely be a little bit lighter in the middle than it is on the edges. All right, we're all done with that. So we've got one more step to do on this and I think we're gonna get back to the high key yellow, uh, the one that we were just using the super thin down version of for the glaze on this. And uh, I wanna do kind of a middle ridge highlight. So instead of doing an edge highlight, we're gonna pretend like each of these little pipes is a, uh, a three dimensional object so that maybe it has like a little peak or maybe it's just rounded and we wanna get just the crest of it. And we're going to try to do stuff where um, our, our strokes are feathered at the ends so that they don't come to a, a, a dead T stop or anything. So like, let's say, you know, if this, is, if this is the area that we want to, this is the line that we want to make here, we're actually going to sort of feather it out and then feather back in at the other end. Just so that it kind of has this um, undulating, like coming up and over and diving back down sort of effect. Let's start off on this guy again so we can finish this one up. All right. So we're, we're going to be coming from here and going around and back down. So let's start over here where it's essentially plunging underneath the, the pipe next to it. Let's just try to get this all centered up here. Okay, we're coming down the middle. And keeping it just as fine as we can here. Okay. So on this one, since it goes just right off the base, I'm just going to have it curve right around this way, which goes straight off. And then we come back in and we can clean up some of this stuff here around the curve and here. And when you're trying to, to taper out your edges, use the brush to your advantage. It's already got a hard point on it. Uh, or at least it should if you have a, a, a good brush. Just kind of point it in the direction you want and press down and it will sort of fe feather out that way so that you should end up with a little point. All right, so let's, let's attack this one next. So we've got our little point and we're coming around the edge. Yep. It's always a little tricky going around corners. Straighten that out there. Okay. Looking good so far. Okay. We got this one. This is a pretty easy one here. No problem. And then we got the last one on this particular sort of area. I'll make sure to add a little bit of water to your brush almost every single time you put it down. Okay. We've got that started. There we go. Okay. And there's some parts that are a little rougher than others here. 
Um, but you can do wet blending or what have you to try to, you know, make them make them look um, harder or softer as you like. Um, you could even after you've done this middle, just decide which direction the light is coming from, and then essentially do a glaze, on, a further glaze on top of one side to make it look brighter than the other. I don't think that we'll probably do that, but it's definitely a thing you could do. Okay, so let's start over here again. Okay. Okay, come around that corner and then just straight off. And we don't have either end of this, so we get to kind of do an easy one here. There we go. Nice and simple. And that one is too far off to actually be seen, so there we go. All right, so let's let's also do something on these vents here. So we've got our, our little streaks of non-metallic gold, and I think that we could probably do some edge highlighting on these, but I think it would be cool if we only edge highlighted the parts that are inside the golden rays. So kind of further giving us the illusion that this is actually light playing on the surface. So let's get in here, and we're going to have the light coming from this direction. Yeah, okay. We'll definitely do that on the rest of these. And uh, just a second off screen, uh, just a moment ago, uh, Justin was saying that instead of doing a um, another glaze on top of half of this to brighten it up further, that you could very easily take a thin down like Agrax Earthshade and bring it back down, and that way it'll be even lower than the, the stuff on the background and you'd, uh, you'd make a really interesting contrast that way. So we've got these pieces pretty much ready to go now, but I think these look a little too clean, so we're gonna do just a little bit of weathering. And like I'd normally do, which is some chipping and some rust stuff, let's just give them a little scuff or something. Um, and since we've been doing non-metallic, I think we're gonna stick with that. So I think that we'll do uh, you know the black line, gray line kind of affair here. Uh, so for these scratches, we're going to lay down a little bit of uh, black FW ink, just something really thin. We're going to pick a couple little spots here and there. Um, I just want to get at least a little something on each one of these bases. Um, and once again, we're going to try to keep this really, really, really fine streak here. Um, let's... I'm trying to just barely whisper over the thing. That's maybe a little too small. Let's add a little water here. Let's try to do one more real close to it. There we go. That's a little better. So we've got a couple little scuffs and scratches right there. We're going to come back and do a little highlighting on that in a second. But uh, let's let's get a couple more on some of these other ones up here. So maybe, maybe we've got something up here in the corner. And you know what? Let's also have one kind of crossing over it. I know it's a little bit cartoony, but non-metallic metal always kind of looks a little cartoony to me anyway, so. And maybe on this little guy here, <clears throat> let's just have something coming right off of that, that little rivet. Just have something that looks like it caught and scratched right there, maybe on the oval. Yeah, we'll just do a couple of slightly off parallel scratches like that. Maybe we'll make one of these just a little longer. Okay, cool. All right, so we've got some really, really minor weathering here. Nothing, nothing huge at all. Um, but we wanna highlight these with just a little bit of gray and something that's gonna push it back up just a little bit. And the gray that I got is actually probably a little bit too light. So I'm gonna add just a little tiny touch of white to it. We created a little bit of directionality last time where we had the, the, the light rays coming in from this direction. Um, so let's keep with that and we'll have the light hitting on the back side of these grooves. Um, so on this one, because the light is coming this way, we want if, the, if my finger is the scratch, we want the light to be on the far edge of it. There we go. Just a little 
tiny, tiny line on the back side. So there we go. That gives us just a little bit more of a, uh, a three-dimensional look to it. It makes it look like there's a, a dark recess and then a light glinting off of one of the edges of those scratches. So let's do this real quick before the paint starts drying on our brush. Okay, we get these guys here. All right, and now we've got these ones up here that are maybe a little trickier because they're crisscrossing over each other, but not to worry, should be still relatively easy. So we're gonna come over here. Okay. And then if it's coming this way, it'll probably catch on the far side over here. Is that, did I do that right that way? So, okay, so yeah, it'll be actually, it'll be on this side of those lines. Here we go. There we go. All right. So there we go. We've got our little scratches all over these guys here. I think those look pretty darn good. I think that we've got one more step here uh, as far as overall tinting, shading, color correcting. <clears throat> and we're gonna use some Ghost Tint Brown if I can look out oh, here it is um, and on the corners here where these uh, are going to be overlapped by or where they they're first exposed underneath the base we're going to do a little bit of ghost tint brown to help create kind of a shadow here all right so we don't want to overdo this here but we're just going to come in just darken it up a little bit right there okay Okay. Okay, and the last little guy here. All right, we've got those shaded now, um, and I'm gonna put just the tiniest hint of that same uh, stuff right around the edges, um, just to, to give us a little bit of a, a shadow and also to kind of tie it all together here. So here we go. brings a little bit of warmness to that otherwise very cold gray area. And I think that all that's left is to assemble these things. So let's pop them off of here and glue them together. All right, so we're just gonna pry these off of here. And I don't think that I actually mentioned it in this video. We've talked about it in previous ones that um, these are just uh, super glued down to a, a piece of board, but I've left the, um, the paper on the back. So you can see here that it's just uh, peeling off of that backer paper. So the paper is actually super glued down, uh, but the plastic is not, so it comes off clean. So now we're just gonna glue these guys down to the lower sections. I'm just using some super glue here, and I'm gonna take just a little piece of paper towel and just sort of dab some of that out to the edges. Now we're just gonna line that up Push it down to get it all set. And there we are. There we are. So now we've got a nice contrast between the, the lower gold areas and upper gold areas. I think that looks really nice. Here we are, we've got our bases done. I think they look really nice. Uh, normally, I think we go a little bit heavy on the, uh, the weathering, but with doing some non-metallic metal and making it look shiny, I think that it's appropriate that we kept these relatively clean. I think that uh, these sets will, will do really well for any Space Wolves player or just about anybody who wants a kind of a Celtic theme to their army. You can check these and other base toppers out over at deathraydesigns.com. This one is called Odin's Armory, so make sure to check this one out. But if it's not your flavor, we've got tons more that you can choose from. We've got something for every single project out there. If you're on YouTube, make sure to hit that thumbs up Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I bet you are though. I bet you are. Uh, if you're on Facebook though, uh, send us uh, some pictures of what you're working on. Also like the post and uh, follow the page.
do all those social media things. We'd love to see what you're working on, especially if you're using some of our products. We'd like to share that out with the community, keep everybody motivated and getting all their projects done. So thanks again, everybody, for watching this video and for hanging out with us while we work. Until next time, happy wargaming. Mm -hmm.